So I've been getting the question over and over and over, how do you save presets inside of the play instruments or can you save presets inside of the play instruments? And the funny thing is, I've been saying that you can, but I've never done it myself. And I so in this video, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to save your own presets in the play instruments. And the one we're going to use is the latest one, which is Glaze. So before we get started, let's roll that intro. Yo, G, bless him, bless him, bless him. Welcome back. Welcome back to Blessed by G Beats. I'm the G, and today we are going to be looking at this another. Uh, we're going to be looking at glaze in, the glaze instru uh, play instrument, but we're going to be looking at it from just a little bit different angle. People have been asking, can you save presets in these play instruments? And in particular, since I've released a video on uh, glaze, appreciate, appreciate, appreciate all of the love that video is getting. Uh, a lot all the love that video is getting since I released it. Um, I'm going to give us a quick tutorial because I don't think anyone has done this, but I'm going to give us a quick tutorial on how to save these glaze instrument or save a preset, your own preset in these play instruments. And uh, might even try to make a little beat here. Might even try to make a little bit of a beat here. I'm sorry, I'm reading a message my wife is sending me. Uh, may even try to make a little bit of a beat here just seeing how we feel and uh matter of fact i may even pull up pure drip because uh i'm kind of i went back last night and i'm kind of uh taking some stuff back i said about pure drip as it applies to sacred futures uh man pure drip is still 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 dope but nevertheless i digress let's pull up this glaze instrument and we're going to uh play around with some sounds and see how do you save the preset? Let's see what we got here. All right, so we have Machina pulled up. We have Machina pulled up. And we have Glaze. Let's go ahead and pull up the first sound. I'm I'm starting to already ready to play around. But let's pull up the first sound. Put that in keyboard mode. I can't help it, man. Let's put some. Let's do a go to the chord set and let's go to made. Let's do a minor. All right, so all we have to do here, and as a matter of fact, we're going to have to do this a little bit different. I thought about, okay, yeah, let's do this a little bit different. I forgot about this the other day. Um, in order for you to be able to see this on the screen, I have to do something a little bit different. Because when you use an NDI, it won't show the pop-ups. All right, so we got the play instrument up so we can see the interface. <laughs> So, first thing, let's start looking at the interface a little bit here. Looks like we got a lot of reverb. Got some delay. So, we've taken all of that off. Let's see, got the little Y here. You can look on the screen, see knobs turning. Well, to automate that into a into a song. All 
All right, let's put a little bit of sauce on it. You can still hear a little bit of something on there, a little bit of reverb. Let's, let's try what the chorus sound like. That chorus down just a teens. A little delay. Very little reverb. Okay, so let's just say we got this the way we want it. And the name of this preset is the fifth element. The name of it is the fifth element. So let's say I want to turn it to the sixth element, the sixth element. So you'll notice up here on the play instrument, you'll notice there's a plus and there looks, there's, looks like a little marker here. Do not use the plus unless you're very familiar with contact. I mean, if you're familiar with contact and you know what all that does, you can go ahead and play with that, but do not hit the plus. Hit the marker. You'll notice that the contact instrument will open up. Here's what you have to be concerned with. Here you have, this is the name of the actual play instrument. You don't want to mess with that. But notice here, this is the name of the actual preset. And what uh, what Native Instruments calls this is the, these are, the, their presets, they call them snapshots. And so, when you create your own preset, it's all it's going to be called a snapshot. And so you come over here and you'll notice you have all of the sounds that come inside of come from the factory. These are all the sounds. But something is going to change when you come over here. So when you come to these arrows left and right, of course, that cycles through the sounds. But this is what you want to be concerned with. This little floppy, as I said in the previous video, some people don't even know what a floppy is. That's what we used to save small amounts of data on in computers. They all had floppy drives. Of course, none of them have floppy drives now. But this is basically symbolic of saving. So you would hit that save button. And notice what comes up. Play, uh, please enter a name for your snapshot. So we're just going to call ours over here I'm gonna call I was the sixth element bam and we have our preset saved now you'll notice when you come back over here now instead of showing all of that list first it starts with factory and user you can't erase the factory sounds play with them mangle them do with them what you want because at the end of the day you can't mess this up as far as the factory sounds. They will always be there. They're always going to be there. You can't mess those up. You go to the user and notice, there it is. Boom, sixth element. We click that. Now, notice what happens when you click on that, when you load that instrument up. Now, when you load it back up, notice what you see. Of course, that we can hear, here's how it sounds. as a matter of fact, let's go to the factory real quick. Let's see, where is that sixth element there? I mean, fifth element. Fifth element. That's the fifth element. But let's load up the sixth element. Notice. Everything's different. Everything's different. And then you'll notice finally over here, this is something else you might want to be, you know, you might want to pay attention to. 
When you load that instrument back up, something now appears, a trash can. If you think the sound is trash, <laughs> or if you don't like the sound, click it, boom, it'll ask you, do you want to delete the snapshot sixth element? Yes, I do. Bam. Come back over here. Notice what you see. No more user. So automatically, when you create your first preset, this now goes into a separate categories, a separate category where it now says factory and user. Factory and user. So it's really that simple. And so now, once you're done with that, you close up the marker. Bam. And you back to where you were. Now I have I, I'm I'm glad that someone people kept asking me this because I made some adjustments to, adjustments to some sounds and noticed when I went back and listened to the beats, the beats sounded different. And they did the the program didn't say the snapshot of what I had edited, and so it went back to factory. So this was great that people started asking this question. I did some research. And so now I can save my own presets. And now through the tutorial, you're going to really be able to get creative with all of these play instruments because you're going to be able to save your own presets. So you know what? I was thinking about it. I was going to make a beat, but I want to make this just into a quick tutorial on how to do this. It's 11 minutes. I want to just make this into a quick tutorial just to help people to understand how to save the play instruments, uh, save their own snapshots in the play instruments. So until the next video, keep grinding, keep inspiring. Peace.